So you've got four key movements. You've got rotation, lateral flexion, extension, and then hip flexion. But as you can tell that they've got ante in front of them. So resisting that rotation, resisting lateral flexion, resisting extension and flaring of the rib cage, and then hip flexion with neutral spine, trying to flex at the hips whilst keeping your shoulders back, keeping your back straight. So this is active layer resisting rotation and lumbar spine. So just hold it, holding it in there. So Gav's there, holding uh, the cable out and the weight is wanting to come back in. And he's having to brace his core so he's not rotating. So how does this transfer through to boxing? Strong rotation of the core, uh, utilizing a stretch shortening cycle when performing combinations. So if I'm, uh, let's say if I'm going for right hand, left hook. If I throw my right hand and I rotate there, but I'm not strong in there, I won't be able to come back round and rotate into my left hook as, as powerful. So even though you're thinking anti-rotation is really stable and doesn't really transfer into rotational exercises, really that strength that you're creating there will have an effect on the stretch shortening cycle there. So it's a little bit like you thinking about your plyometric journey again. So trying to land first, absorb that force, then transfer that into explosive movements. So it's the same with the core. You try and get stable first and pass over that strength into more explosive movements. So we've got pull off press. So we can either use a band or we can use a cable on there. We're gonna bring out the band, line with our sternum, shoulders back, knees slightly bent, and we're pushing out and bringing it back in, okay? Shoulders back and down, what you're likely to see is, one, is wanting to shrug up our shoulders, use these strong shoulders all the time. If you keep your shoulders back and down, you should feel it in your core a lot better. Find it hard, get a little bit closer, less tension on the band, find it easy, You thought I weren't going to do it then. <laughs> okay, I'm pressing that there. Strength now. So remember, strength is challenging stabi stability through like dynamic movement. So first one, cable rotations, okay, or banded rotations. So you can either grab a cable on a pulling machine, you can just grab one of these bands here. Knees slightly bent, feet hip width apart, Rotating, then back. And as soon as we're back at the centre, rotating again. Okay. What you want to try and do is to keep these hips locked in position. So I'd, like we were saying about the lunges the other day, I don't care whether you're rotating all the way around or rotating to there, as long as you're keeping these legs fixed in position. So when you rotate, we're just getting to there, back to the center, and back round, okay? If you're going to rotate your hips, rotate your hips fully. So make it more of a like kind of a lower body movement and bring your hips round. Okay, so that hip movement becomes purposeful and actually contributes. Pardon? Yeah, yeah. Well, well, it's kind of both. It's kind of both. Yeah. So, so you you're pushing off this leg, rotating through. So it's hip rotation, and core rotation as well, and you're managing to get more movement as well. As well, you want to. We want to challenge that stretch shortening cycle, so you don't want to be stop the rep, and then just go again. As soon as we're there, straight away, we go again. That's the eccentric into concentric, which is slow movement. So you want to you want to control it coming down. That's the anti-rotation and drive through. That's your strength. Okay. You do more reps on this, so you do around about ten reps. 10 reps each time.
uh, just rotational throws. So we can either go with a hip twist or we can go keeping his legs stationary. Now remember what the, the main reason why we're doing core training is to improve the stretch shortening cycle of the core. So when I see people doing wall slams and going there and just throwing it as hard as they can, so that's like concentric force, not challenging the eccentric. So we do a lot of catch and throw techniques. From standing, it's a little bit difficult because we're going with a heavier ball or if it's a lighter ball, it's going quite fast. So I'd encourage to start there, drop down into it and then throw. Or we can do catch and throw, so I'll throw it straight back out. Okay, so catching it, rapidly controlling that force, and then going into concentric force. So that's your rotation, but also catching it there, you're also going into lateral flexion, okay? So in, in these kind of drills, the two merge into one. So anti-lateral flexion and anti-rotation, in explosive terms, merge into one, and then the anti-extension, hip flexion with neutral spine, also merge into one as well. Then we've got some kneeling variations as well. You can do it on one knee, but we mainly do it on two knees, okay? So I'll show you the rotations first. Fire it into there. Other side. We throw it again. You can see now we've transferred all the all the work that we've done into this important phase just before we fight to get them explosive actions through a core. So we're controlling that eccentric, fast stretch shortening cycle of the core muscles, and then firing straight back through. I'm not going all the way down, not flexing the hips, not arching my back to try and get as much momentum into shot. I'm trying to catch it, use rapid rotation and drive back through.